Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and I have been waking up every hour, on the hour, all night long, excited to record this video. But before we start, First Kill Graphic Novel, link is in the description. So, as I've said before, Heidi McDonald is the gold standard for corruption in the comic book industry. If Heidi told me my own name, I would go to my birth certificate to double check if it was true. Here's the problem. Heidi is around 60, and she is now passing her corruption off to the next generation. So yesterday she shares this TikTok. Wow! Comic sales data comes to TikTok. My mind is blown. Also, pretty solid evidence that Jonathan Kent comics sold well. Amazing job by Chris at Washington Post. Also, this is why we need sales charts. They're being hidden because the sales are bad. You are dancing around that, Heidi because you're corrupt and you want to still be in the good graces of the mainstream industry. That's all it is. There's not even money changing hands. It's just a corrupt woman not wanting to be ostracized. So Chris Vasquez, who is associate TikTok producer at Washington Post, I tweet about comics and the news. He, him. Today's first Washington Post TikTok has to be tweeted in two parts. It's the giant size season finale of Variant Cover, my series on identity in comics. Conservative outlets have pointed to low sales data for a comic about a bisexual Superman. That data is incomplete. So Data Editor and I collected more data ourselves. We found that overall, Superman's Son of Kal-El and other comics featuring John Kent sold pretty well. Pretty well. A completely subjective and arbitrary term. But these numbers can be, and have been, manipulated and taken out of context. Here's how. Have you heard this surprising right-wing talking point? DC Comics are cancelling their gay Superman solo run. Their new woke Superman fails to fly with readers. Of course this thing isn't selling. But here's the thing. Not just about comic book sales data, but data in general. It can be manipulated and taken out of context to misinform you. Let me show So what's going to happen is he's going to manipulate it and take information out of context to misinform you. I'm Chris, and this is the giant size season finale of Variant Cover, a series about the people and the ideas that don't always get the spotlight in comic book culture. Superman Son of Kal-El is a comic book about Clark Kent's son, John Kent. John is bi. When DC Comics- No, he's not. <laughs> he's not bi at all. So bisexual in comics is used very differently than it is in the real world. In the real world, bisexual means you're attracted to men and women. In comics, if you're a creator, bisexual means you're straight. If you're a character, bisexual means you used to be straight and now you are gay and you are gay forever. It's announced last October that the book would be ending that December. Conservative outlets pointed to data showing low sales. This article in particular sparked a lot of discussion about those sales. It cited data that was over a year old when it was published. Okay, so they're gonna mention this several times as a way to discredit this article, which is a very short article. They're gonna keep saying, they used year-old data, which implies dishonesty. But here's the article. And in about the middle of this very short article, it says, As I reported in January, the initial debut of Son of Kal-El sold only 68,000 copies, putting it at number 17. By the third issue, it had only sold 34,000, putting it at number 77. So he wasn't presenting old numbers as current ones, as is implied by this corrupt journalist but he simply reminded you of an earlier article he had written on the subject. It also doesn't say where it got that data from. And the data came from Comicron. Comicron is the most widely accepted source for data for the comic book industry. Basically everyone kind of likes it. How do you work at the Washington Post and you have no idea where these numbers came from? Here it is, first issue. It debuted at the 17th spot with a ton of press it sold 68,000. Here's the third issue, 77, 34,000. You want to discredit this conservative blog and they reported things in context 100% accurately. Meanwhile, you're doing this Goo Goo Gaga thing where you have no idea where they got this information implying that they made it up. These are all red flags. The website also isn't shy about branding itself as conservative and the framing of this story as being against queer Okay, so isn't shy about branding themselves conservative is called transparency. They are being open about their biases, 
while you are implying that you're a centrist. And the framing of this story as being against queer representation is pretty clear. They use the word homosexual as proof of homophobia by the conservative blog. When that's all that any of the supporters of this character have ever said. He's gay, he's bi, he's LGBT, he's queer. They just used another synonym. LL writer Tom Taylor then tweeted that the book was selling well digitally on Amazon. I tried doing a Misinformation Monday video about all this as it was going down, but my boss was like, we need more data. So I took screen recordings of Amazon's superhero comics bestseller list every new DC Comics release day until the end of 2022. Then I had all- Okay, so this is why I bring up the word corruption so much. Corruption is a huge, huge problem. They have this organization called Transparency International, and they have the Corruption Perceptions Index. And they actually constantly update this about what are the most and least corrupt countries in the world. And they explain it very well. Corruption undermines government's ability to protect people and erodes public trust, provoking more and harder to control security threats. All we need out of journalists is for you to not be corrupt. When you are corrupt, as you both are, you have failed at 100% of your job. So Tom Taylor, to prove his book was selling so incredibly well, would wait until the moment it was released on Amazon, then screenshot that it was number one. The Amazon bestseller lists are notoriously easy to manipulate. So you can call that a corrupt way of proving bestselling, or you can just call it a very shoddy way. That a so-called journalist would use the exact same ridiculous way in which he wanted to write this article in response to the conservative blog last October. His editor said, we need more data. And instead of contacting companies, instead of contacting distributors, he just did the same methodology that Tom Taylor used more data. So I took screen recordings of Amazon's superhero comics bestseller list every new DC Comics release day until the end of 2022. Then I had all this data. But I'm too gay to do math, so I asked data reporter Steven. But I'm too gay to do math. I don't even think that would fly on The Daily Show as a comedy segment. This is the Washington Post. It's a news organization. I first met with Steven about all this a few months ago. I forgot to record his video, but I did record his audio. So for now, I will be playing the role of Steven. You know we could just refilm this. I can't hear you. Keep rolling. The more we do the sort of manual data entry, the more we get a good feel for what fields can be collected. One thing I thought would be funny is if we filmed like a little like training montage at some point where it's just like me like typing things into the spreadsheet. <laughs> Chris, you want to show us something? Explain. Explain. Earlier I Okay, so this is where they prove the thesis, except for all he proves is that he is the next generation of corrupt journalist. His hypothesis earlier was that random data points were being misinterpreted maliciously by a conservative outlet. He is now using essentially the same data points in the opposite direction with an even less provable source. At least the conservative outlet was using Comicron, which is a generally agreed upon source of data. His source of data is taking screenshots of the Amazon bestseller listings for comic books and graphic novels. And then it gets even worse. I was talking about how data can be manipulated. You can cite year old data showing that son of kal -El sold. Okay, they bring up that year old data again to discredit the entire article. But as I showed in the article, it was simply a reference to an earlier article that at the time was not a year old. That at the time, in October, it was about nine months old. This is purposely deceptive. Continually saying a year old when it was not a year old at the time, when it was referencing an earlier article that was trenchant because it was the first issue. Also the third issue, which is where the sales tend to stabilize at number 77 without even showing what that means or you can it means it's at number 77 it that means it means it started at 17 and then it settled at 77 you're purposely at a news organization trying to deceive people say its last issue was in the top quarter of dc's so it got back up to number 14 on its last issue there was a big publicity push towards the end mainstream across the board publicity and that improved the sales. 
best-selling print comics in December. And no, this sign isn't torn. You can say no one wants to read about John Kent because only 6% of the best-selling superhero comics on Amazon at the end of December of 2022 featured John Kent. Or you can say lots of people want to read about him because by the end of 2022, he was in four of the nine best-selling DC comics. This is corruption and gaslighting to a level that even Heidi McDonald does not attempt. This is why I will continually harp on corruption. It undermines governments, societies, industries. It makes people not know who to trust. And this is why you see the mainstream press attack YouTube so much. I think an average person in a society would naturally hew towards trusting mainstream institutions like Washington Post. Even like Comics Beat, which has been around for decades. But when you continually see the most easily disprovable lies, when you are constantly fed propaganda, when their corruption gets worse every generation, that's when everyone says, hey, fuck you. Those YouTubers might be annoying, but I trust them more than I trust you. So this is their big thesis, that John was in 44% of the top nine best-selling superhero comics on Amazon which was because there were several event books, crossovers, that included basically every major character in the DC Universe. Those tend to be popular, those tend to sell better than individual issues. So he was in 44% of the top nine without naming what they are or without giving any context at all, implying that it was the popularity of Jonathan Kent and not just Here's our three events this month, all of which contain basically every character, and Jonathan Kent is also in there. Comics on that list, including the best-selling one. Each of these signs shows a different data point. You could draw a different conclusion from each one. So then his boss presents an actual journalistic challenge. How can we know what's true if even hard data is open to interpretation? Mind you, I've proven there has been constant gaslighting deception, and corruption throughout this entire piece. His answer... True, if even hard data is open to interpretation. Experts can help put that data into context to help draw accurate conclusions. Okay, so experts, which is the associate TikTok twink at the Washington Post, regurgitating lies of the most corrupt woman in comics, playing a Goo Goo Gaga routine where he pretends like he has no idea where the data point came from, which was Comicron, and then the data reporter saying, these numbers are not explained to what they mean. I think everyone intrinsically knows that 17th best selling is better than 77th best selling. And they also know that 34,000 is half of 68,000. Like the book ended amid a larger soft reboot of DC Comics, and John Kent is getting his own comic book in that reboot. Plus, an expert I talked to said the sales data that conservative outlets like Red State have been citing is pretty standard. They're not bad numbers. This is the expert he was citing. Heidi fucking McDonald. The most corrupt journalist we have ever had in the comic book industry, and yet she is passing her corruption down to the next generation and being used as a source. She says that Jonathan Kent's sales numbers are not bad numbers by any stretch of the imagination. But Heidi also told me this industry doesn't have a lot of data on hand. We can see how many comics stores have ordered from distributors and how many comics a sample of stores sold to customers. But overall, our data sucks. Having better data is definitely a way to combat ignorance. And OK, so we've got two corrupt journalists talking to each other right here. But what if they weren't corrupt? So this is the point where they would say, do you have contacts at Marvel? Do you have contacts at DC? Do you have contacts at Image? Let's, if we don't have them, and Heidi McDonald should have them, let's find out who they are. Let's go there. You do actual fucking journalism, and you ask the companies, why are you not reporting sales data anymore? But Marvel knows how many books they print. They know how many they send to each of the three distributors. You just have to add three numbers together. This is the problem. Heidi McDonald is pushing her corruption to the next generation of comic book journalists, to mainstream journalism. Goo goo gaga, I wish we had better data. I don't know where they got these numbers. Comicron. They got them from Comicron. If you want better numbers, start pressing the publishers to give them to you. Here's my fucking numbers. This is all the numbers for every campaign, for every book, and I even ranked my own stuff. One to ten. It's real easy.
I thought this was going to be one of those fun videos, but corruption really infuriates me because you see it spread. You see it spread in workplaces. You see it spread in industries. You see it spread in countries. Heidi, Chris, your jobs are to not be corrupt. You are actively harming the industry you are pretending to cover. And there is no excuse for this. Do your fucking jobs. Anyway, before I go, this is my fucking job, selling comic books. First Kill graphic novel, link is in the description. Thanks for watching. Bye.